بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم این السلام علیکم پاکستان وی آر بیک ود آر ماڈیولس آن ایتھیکل لیڈرشپ اینڈ چیلنجز آف ایتھیکل لیونگ ناؤ وی آر کمنگ نیئر دی اینڈ وی آر لوکنگ ایٹ ڈفرنٹ ایسپیکٹس وی ہیو لکڈ ایٹ سم ویڈیوز وی ہیو ڈن سم کیس اسٹڈیز اینڈ ناؤ وی گوئنگ ٹو ڈو انادر کیس اسٹڈی وچ از آن مورل پولیسنگ آن اے کلنگ اینڈ سوسائٹی ناؤ اے کوشچن مائٹ کم اپ ان یور مائنڈ دیٹ واٹ از دا ریلیشن شپ آف آنر کلنگز ود کارپوریٹ گورننس نان بٹ there is a psychological implication that how are people compelled instigated or motivated to do abhorrent unbelievable act of violence of rectitude of doing something which a human being should not be doing how does that happen so we are just looking at a case study and based upon that case study we're just trying to understand that why do people do things which are abhorrent and abusive manipulative exploitive and detrimental for the whole of society and in that same context we are going to amalgamate moral policing because any institution is a part of society and what is happening in society can happen in an institution so we have to try to understand the psychological context of the actions of different people and how can we avoid them it is just like the recent case study of noor muqaddam which took place in the city of islamabad why did she have to go through so much of pain traversity and abuse why was such an educated well off individual involved in the slaughter of a wonderful lady and then what he did is so abhorrent that i cannot even share that over here but everyone is aware of it so similarly in this case study we are going to see the the context and the implication and how detrimental moral policing can be how trolling can be psychologically devastating for an employee for an individual how families can be destroyed due to the vulgarity and the individual vandalism done by certain stakeholders within an organization or within a community these are very important aspects of life which we as as practitioners as corporate executives as students and researchers have to understand its implications and contextualize a better way forward so that we can have conducive work and life environment so again this study is a offshoot from uh, from those two modules which were developed by UNODC and are now being globally taught uh, around the world so that people can understand these contexts and the future leaders uh, which are you you can understand what should be done and what should not be done and you should nip it at the bud before something wrong happens and that also is the very context and essence of corporate governance so when we are looking at all of this uh, we see that uh, honor killings have been prevalent in pakistani society since pre independence and despite development education exposure in the modern world this phenomena continues to prevail in many segments of society the situation has been further aggravated with the advent of social media and associated behaviors such as trolling cyberbullying and moral policing so we can see trolling cyberbullying and moral policing in in corporations in corporate organizations and therefore when we're talking about corporate governance how do we manage these uh, different points how can we ensure that we have a healthy working environment and people are not being subjected to these phenomena and most importantly when we talk about honor killings or we talk about feudalism or we talk about a feudal society then again what happens is is that we see that feudalism is not a reflection of aristocracy but actually feudalism is a way of thinking is a way of behavior and what is it it is that if there is someone who is weaker than us then we tend to superimpose our authority 
and if there is someone stronger than us, then we become subservient. And this type of hypocritical and multiplicity behavior tends to sometimes spiral out of control and lead to uh, this very damaging aspect which is found in society and it is further aggravated through trolling, cyberbullying and moral policing. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's extremely important that we, we don't indulge in these practices. It, it might just seem to be a very casual approach. It's not casual. Uh, it's not funny. Uh, it's, not, it's not something which does not have consequences. We have to understand the consequences of our actions and not indulge in these practices which can destroy the lives of anyone. Now, if we just take up a case study and a very famous case study of Kandil Baloch, then we know that she was strangled by her own brother in the name of family honor. And what we see, uh, I, I, I'll just browse through uh, the story and that is that we see that she was married off at a very young age. She came from an impoverished uh, family. Her husband was very abusive. She was subjected to a lot of abuse, manipulation and exploitation. And then finally, she broke the shackles. And then through her own work, she studied. She became a model. She started uh, her own uh, social pages. And she became very popular. And based upon that popularity, she would be involved in different uh, dramatics and provocative pictures also sometimes. She was subjected to intense criticism and moral policing and vilified for every action that she, she would had. But despite all of that, she had a lot of concern for her family and she was taking care of her family, which were initially impoverished. And again, uh, she came to more limelight uh, in the cleric Mufti Abdul Kavi uh, issue, which emerged. And she subverted every single uh, rule in the book. And because of that, she was condemned, she was loved, she was praised. Different people had different perspectives. But unfortunately, the same brother that she was taking care of uh, got influenced by uh, different uh, individuals, by different uh, social media contextualization, and unfortunately, he was strangled to death. Now, what we see is, is that usually in honor killings, the perpetrator is basically uh, saved by the same family because he or she comes from that same family. Now, the question that I would like all of you to think about, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, is, is that what do you think about trolling and moral policing? Should we do it in society or organization? Or should we not do it? If it should be allowed to be done, then why? And what is the extent which is acceptable? How do we define the barrier? How do we know when my freedom ends, your freedom begins? And Moral policing, what are its consequences? And again, how can it be channelized to be constructive rather than destructive? Does it have any implications for individuals and organizations? And I would like you, based upon your very wide global exposure, to identify the cogent reasons that why is it done? And how can it be controlled? Because that is the real essence. Now, some more questions from this case study emerge, and that is, in your opinion, what are the ethical challenges for Kandil Bloch? Should social media be regulated and censored in Pakistan? How can moral policing be curtailed on social media? Household and corporate abuse harassment is common in Pakistan. How can they be discouraged? And how can legal remedies be effectively implemented? Now, that is a very important question. We, we, we have different laws. But we have issues in its implementation. We don't have the rule of law. We have rule of the law. And how is it that corporate abuse and harassment can also be discouraged? That is extremely important. Because if we don't discourage it, then we see that many people are suffering due to these inadequacies and these intellectual and thought-based abuses which are taking place and that must not be allowed. So these different 
incidents of harassment against females? What should be the practical implementation to improve the organizational environment so that females become more inclined towards corporate employment? That is a direct context of corporate governance. Is Pakistan a predominantly male chauvinistic society or a misogynist society where women are condemned, abused, hated, and, and unfortunately have to go through horrific experiences and episodes of life? What are the implications of all of this in the corporate world? And should moral policing of the corporate world be encouraged or discouraged? and why so uh, ladies and gentlemen these are the questions which i would like you to think about because they are happening in different ways in different parts of institutions and different societies and those vultures who tend to prey upon the innocent they must be stopped and they must be stopped effectively so that we can have safe, secure, conducive, constructive, positive work environment. Thank you so much.